Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Emanuel Lutheran Church, member of the Evangelical Lutheran Synod on this fourth Sunday of Easter. And our theme for today is Jesus is gone, but we are not forgotten. And we begin with our first hymn, hymn, hymn number 188. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us. 
and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he giveth the power to become the sons of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Our psalm of the day, Psalm 66, focuses on God's awesome deeds by which he delivered his people Israel from Egypt and how he still delivers us today. We join in the responsive reading of Psalm 66. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. I will sacrifice bad animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me.
with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those who are in error the light of your truth, to the intent that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant that all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's kingdom may avoid those things that are contrary to their professions and follow all such things that are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Since Easter, the Lord's resurrection has occupied the thoughts and minds of the church. This Sunday, we are given a look into the future, Christ and our own future. So it is our joy of Easter is not lessened, but it actually grows stronger. In our first lesson, Jeremiah is, has his own experience during his ministry and he expresses that he and fellow believers were feeling when they saw Jerusalem fall. He went through much, yet he has hope in the Lord. And his hope comes from the Lord's great love, his great compassion, and his faithfulness. Our first lesson is from the Old Testament reading of Lamentations chapter 3, verses 18 through 26. So I say my splendor is gone, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the, great, the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Here end <laughs> when the work is done, then the rest can begin. A Christian's faith is a continued Sabbath, a state of rest, because Christ completed all the work necessary for our salvation. At the same time, having that restful soul makes us then ready to go to work. Our peace and motivation to work that has the same source, that powerful Word of God. And this work we carry out confidently because we can rely on the Word as our weapon and the Son of God as our direct line to God's throne of grace. The Epistle lesson for the fourth Sunday after Easter is written in the fourth chapter of Hebrews, reading verses 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Here ended the epistle, we join in the gradual. Alleluia! Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. Gospel lesson is the final statement.
stages of Jesus' redemptive work. Here he permits his followers to hear him present his deepest, most heartfelt concerns to his Heavenly Father. He longs to bring his mission to a successful conclusion so that he may reassume his position of exalted glory. He addresses the future welfare of his followers who will no longer enjoy his visible presence. And in this prayer, we see Jesus functioning as our great high priest, our exalted Lord, who lives to represent the needs of his people before the throne of God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of St. John, reading verses 1 through 11. Please rise for the reading. Glory be to After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. You have granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They are yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name, those you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Here endeth the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 12. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand God, the Father Almighty, permits us not to judge the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. <laughs>
in prayer, we hear the words of our text written in John chapter 17, reading again verses 9 to 11, and we read as follows as Jesus prayed to his disciples and for us. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. These are your words, Heavenly Father, and they are the truth. Keep us in that truth. Amen. One thing that we learn from this text is that Jesus prays for us. He talks to his Heavenly Father about us constantly as an ongoing discussion between God, the Mediator, and his people here on earth. And if you know Christianity, this doesn't seem so surprising, but think of all that led up to this marvelous arrangement. First, the incarnation of God's Son, his birth, his life as God's servant, his work on the cross, and then his resurrection. All of this leads up to the fact that Jesus has ascended into the heavenly place and sits in honor at God's right hand, glorified with glory, which he had with the Father from the foundation of the world. The other reason why Jesus praying on our behalf points to his infinite, powerful, loving will. The other that is being expressed here and exercised on our behalf. You've probably heard this saying, or even seen it written on a gravestone, when someone has died, gone, but not forgotten. It usually means that although someone is not physically present with us, we still feel his presence because of his memory or because of the accomplishments that he left behind. So today let us consider that Jesus is gone, but not forgotten. Here, we gain an insight into the relationship between the Father, the Son, and us, his church, here on earth. Here we see the truth that Jesus is gone, but we are not forgotten, which is our theme. And we consider first the glory of Christ in his ascension, and second, the spiritual unity that remains between God and us. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, who reigns over heaven and earth from the glorious right hand of the Father. Jesus is indeed gone in a visible sense, but consider the glory of Christ at his ascension. Jesus prayed to the Father in our text, now I am no longer in the world. Well, actually, he was still in the world at this particular moment of the prayer. But at the time of this amazing prayer, offered in the presence of his disciples at the close of the Passover supper, Jesus had, for all intents and purposes, completed his journey upon the earth 
And from where he stood, at that moment, he could see the cross in all its horror. And he also could see the eternal glory then that lay beyond the cross. During those excruciating hours where Jesus went to the cross, the disciples were going to see just what the world can do and what it would do to someone who spoke the truth. But by that same token, these followers of Jesus would see how Jesus, meek as a lamb, would overcome the world through his perfect obedience to the Father. In fact, Jesus had spoken some length to the twelve before he began this prayer, and his closing words to them were, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will find tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. It brings the believer great peace knowing that Jesus has overcome the world. The disciples of Jesus, not just the twelve, would find wonderful peace and joy knowing that Jesus has risen and conquered sin, death, and the devil. For 40 days after Easter, Jesus visited with his disciples. He could see them. They could touch him. They could speak with him. For those 40 days, he taught them about the kingdom of God, what it meant, how it functioned, and what their role in it was. And no doubt he spoke about to them about these things earlier, but now it would come together so beautifully. The day came when Jesus led the disciples then out to the Mount of Olives. He spoke to them again and told them that they would be witnesses to him in all the world. And then he parted from them, rising from the earth and disappearing into the clouds. Imagine if this had happened seven weeks earlier. Seeing Joseph, uh, Jesus simply float away would have been devastating for the disciples. It would have been of little help to have an angel come to tempt them and say, This same Jesus will come in the like manner as you saw him go to heaven. Because they would have felt nothing but loss. But now, they felt joy and peace and triumph. They even returned to the city, not lost in uncertainty, but confident in praising God for his glorious work. They could have such bold joy because they knew and understood Jesus had done all that he was meant to do on earth and he had to return to his Father where he would take his place in triumph. On an earlier occasion, Jesus told them, all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. Most importantly of all is this vast power of this vast power is the fact that he had been given the authority over all men. That authority then extends to giving the gift of eternal life to all whom the Father gives him. Now Jesus here doesn't claim that he'd simply gathered these followers because of being a clever preacher any more than those who those followers could say, I chose Jesus because they were such good characters. Their relationship was ordained by God from eternity. Jesus understood that the Father willed to give them to him. 
the power to give eternal life to the sinner would come through Jesus' work of redemption so the sinful world might be justified in the presence of God. You see, it is always the Father who draws the sinner to Jesus and through the Holy Spirit's work, they believe in Him as their Savior and that Jesus gives them eternal life. Even with Jesus gone from us into heaven, he still gives us, or gives all who believe, eternal life. As John 17, 3 tells us, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You see, our eternal life begins the instant that the waters of holy baptism were placed upon our hands. It grows and becomes strong and wonderful as we increase in the knowledge of God through the means of, the, of means of grace. Eternal life is alive. It's active in us. And we put our hope in an unseen Christ because we stake our whole life and eternal future on the fact that He who redeemed us from our sins and rose again from the dead is ruling over heaven and earth from the right hand of God. Eternal life is the joyous assurance that this triumphant Savior from, is now governing all things for the eternal well-being of His church. We come to rest our hopes then in Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it seems that Jesus is gone, but we do not forget him. And more importantly, we are not forgotten either. There's a spiritual unity that remains. Jesus stated, I am no longer in the world, but then he went on to say, but these are in the world. And since the world is where we are. It's time to give some thought to what Jesus meant by in the world. You know that he doesn't have in mind simply the created realm, the planet Earth and its unique place in the solar system. The wonder of creation with its endowment of God's wisdom and order called into life and into being by his glory. No, the world Jesus refers to is darker and more sinister. It is the realm of sinful man moving in concert with that old rebel, Satan, who has led the whole world, moral universe of man, into sin and rebellion against God. Now, this world can be alluring to us, but in the end, it's nothing but evil. It can appear very compassionate at times, but it's always fatal. It is characterized not just by murder and violence, which we see almost every day, but by contempt and hard-heartedness and especially hatred against God. It is spoiled by greed and thievery as well as waste and discontent. It is condemned of godlessness and idolatry, but also thanklessness and doubt. This is the world that reigns supreme that we live in. But the Father has mercifully called us out of it know the righteousness of Christ, but it still work, lurks ever closely, and we are not untouched by it. Jesus remembers us, where we are, and he prays to the Father for us. And strangely enough, he clearly states that he doesn't pray for the Father to take us out of the world that we are in. After all, we are meant to be sons.
salt of the earth. Rather, he prays that the Father would keep us from the evil one. Jesus says, Father, keep them through your name. And knowing your Father's name is enough to keep you safe, to sustain your faith, to protect us in faith. But a name is more than simply knowing a proper name. God doesn't mean to teach us just a mouthful of a few syllables. God's name includes everything he reveals about himself. His name is in the word that he has given us through the prophets and apostles. And even without Jesus present with us in this world, the word of God is able to break stony hearts Replace them with new living hearts that beat with the grace of God. The word of God which opens his name to us doesn't just tell us some vague God about out there someplace, but he's able to show us the Father by showing his Son, Jesus Christ. The word does not simply condemn an impersonal world that is out there. It exposes the sin that lies in our hearts. And it teaches us to repent. Lest we be drawn back into that world. This word doesn't just suggest solutions for various problems in life. It proclaims Jesus Christ who is the solution. To all who are poor in spirit are spiritually starving, the meek and poor of the world. It works eternal life in those who believe its good news. Yes, our invisible God is not, is not, has not forgotten us. He has given us the word to proclaim, and he makes it a visible word in the sacraments where he feeds and nourishes our hearts during our time in this world. Through that name, the Father sends his Holy Spirit who keeps our eyes fixed firmly on our ascended Lord Jesus Christ. If we do his works, that is, live by faith, Jesus will bring the Father, and they will live with us and we with them. Yes, he is gone, but we are not forgotten. For when we die, or if the Lord returns, we will be with him again in that home that he has prepared for us. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.
Please rise for prayer. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. First this morning we join in prayer for uh, some of our congregation members who are leaving us. Uh, we have sadness in our heart of that, but we also want to wish our blessing upon them. So we join in prayer. Heavenly Father, as Jacob, Annie, and Rosie, and also Tracy, embark on a new journey in life and move to a new place, we pray, give your guidance, illuminate the path before them, and lead them to the right location where your work can continue in their lives. Grant them wisdom and discernment as they make decisions so that they choose your will, O Lord, that they thrive for this and fulfill all your purpose. In your infinite mercy we pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for your great goodness and mercy to have sent your only begotten Son to become incarnate to redeem us from sin and everlasting death. We ask you to enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit through the means of grace that we may evermore give you thanks for your grace and may we comfort ourselves with the same in all time of tribulation and temptation. Send forth labors into your harvest who teach the word in its truth and purity, that your joyous gospel may be heard in every land and nation. Grant health and wisdom to our government and all who are in authority that they may dwell in peace in this land of freedom. Send our land good weather and needed rains that we may eat our daily bread and offer our first fruits unto you. Bless the efforts of business and workers and all labors and help them in their needs, providing all for their good. <laughs> Protect our homes and families from all danger of body and soul, that we may live a life pleasing to you here on earth and hereafter in eternity with you and all our brothers who have gone before us. We pray all this in the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn number 616.
Please rise for our closing prayer. Blessed Lord, thou hast caused all holy scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word you may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.